Hello students, welcome to EPG. I am Mrs. N. Gayatri, working as assistant professor, Department of Interior Decoration and Decor. Let us see the sources of color and, and different types of color and color schemes. Um, the sources of color. Color is an inherent visual property of all forms. We are surrounded by color in our environmental settings. The colors we attribute to objects, however, find the source in the light that illuminates and reveals form and space. Without light, color does not exist. When white light falls on an opaque object, selective absorption occurs. The surface of the object absorbs certain wavelengths of light and reflects others. Our eyes apprehend the color of the reflected light as the color of the object, which wavelengths or bands of light are absorbed and which are reflected as a object color is determined by the pigmentation of a surface. A red surface appears red because it absorbs most of the blue and green light falling on it and reflects the red part of the spectrum. Similarly, a black surface absorbs the entire spectrum, a white surface reflects all of it. This distribution of color in light rays is reflected as a rainbow on a rainy day when the light ray passes through a water droplet which acts as a prism. A surface has the natural pigmentation of its material. This coloration can be altered with the application of paints, stains or dyes which contain color pigments. While color light is additive in nature, color pigments are subtractive. Each pigment absorbs certain proportions of white light. When pigments are mixed, their absorptions combine to subtract various colors of the spectrum. The colors that remain determine the hue, value, intensity of the mixed pigment. Let us see the qualities of color. We will see one by one the qualities of color, how colors differ from one another. There are three properties or qualities which may be called the dimensions of color and which are just as distinct from one another as the length, breadth and thickness of an object. We will see the three different dimensions of color. These color dimensions are first one is their warmth or coolness that is the hue or name of the color. Second one is their lightness or darkness that is the value of the color. Third one is their brightness or dullness that is the intensity or chroma of the color. All three of these dimensions are hue, value and intensity present in every color just as every object has length and breadth and thickness. Let us see one by one. The first one is hue. The symbol of hue is H. Hue is the term used to indicate the name of the color such as red, blue or green. Hue is used to describe a kind of a color and is practically synonymous with the term color itself such as red, blue, green, yellow, etc. The difference between red and blue is the difference in their hue. If a person wishes to change the hue of a color, he will mix it with some of a neighboring or adjacent hue. For example, some red added to blue will change its hue to purple. A change of a color may be accomplished by dyeing or by putting a semi-transparent fabric over the color. Some very interesting effects may be obtained by his process. Hue. In the pigment color chart, the hues falls into two large groups, one or either side of the vertical line. Hues on the right side near blue are the cool hues and those on the left side around red and orange are the warm. Red and orange are the warmth of all the colors and they seem to advance the most and thus be the most conspicuous. Blue hues and blue purple are the whole coldest hues and they seem to recede and become inconspicuous. Green is between heat and cold but it gets warmer as it grows yellowish and 
becomes cooler as it grows bluish. Hues and seasons. We will see the hues and seasons in detail. Certain hues seem to be particularly appropriate to the different seasons of the year. Window decoration and advertisements may be made to suggest the seasons. If colors are chosen according to the following plan. We will see the different seasons one by one. The first one is spring starting with blue through blue green to green. Second one is summer green, yellow green and yellow approaching a yellowish orange towards the end of the summer. Next is autumn, orange, red and red purple. Last one is winter, purple, blue purple and blue. Let us see the effect of hues. Warm hues are more cheerful and stimulating than cool hues which are calm and restful. This quality of color that is warm and cool can successfully be used to counter such effects in a room. A room which is facing southwest or west receives high intense sunlight during the day and this makes the room remain warm especially during summer. A cool color scheme with blues, blue greens etc can help to counter this effect. Similarly, a north or northeast facing rooms becomes very cold during winters since it does not receive any sunlight at all day time. A warm color scheme of orange, red, yellow is appropriate since it would provide an atmosphere of warmth in those rooms. When used on an enclosing place of space, cool hues appear to recede and increase apparent distance. They can therefore be used to enhance the spaciousness of a room and increase apparent distance with length or ceiling of all rooms. Any warm color used for the ceiling might give a feeling of advancing towards the persons who are present in the room. Warm hues thus appear to advance and suggest nearness. These traits can be used to diminish the scale of a space or in an illusory way shorten a room's dimensions. We will see the how to change the hues in rooms. If a person wishes to the change the hue of a color, he will mix with if some of a neighboring or adjacent hue. For example, some red added to blue paint will change its hue to purple. A change of hue may be accomplished by dyeing or by putting a semi-transparent fabric over another color. Blue can be turned towards purple by putting red or red purple under or over it and towards green by the use of yellow or green. Next see the warm and cool hues. The hue will fall into two large groups one on either side of the vertical line. The colors at the right of the line near the hues are the cool hues and those on the left side of the vertical line around red and orange are the warm. Red and orange are the warmest of all the colors and they seem to advance the most and be the most conspicuous. Blue and blue purple are the coldest hues and they seem to recede and become inconspicuous. Green is between heat and cold but it gets warmer as it grows yellowish and cooler as it grows bluish. This quality of warmth and coolness is the most important thing to remember about hues. There is a harmony among the warm colors because they are related to one another and the same harmony or family quality exists among the cool colors. But the warm and cool colors are strangers to each other. As white complements black and heat complements cold, so are warm and cool complements. They contrast rather than harmonize. Next see the advancing and receding hues. The warm advancing hues will make objects appear larger and nearer to the observer. While the cool hues which seem to recede 
will appear to reduce size. We will see the picture of advancing and receding colors. Next, we will see the effects of different hues. Hues have a decided effect upon one's feelings and it is important to know how people react towards color schemes. People tired more quickly of the six standard colors clear green, yellow, orange, red, purple and blue then do of the intermediate yellow green, yellow orange, red orange, red purple, blue purple and blue green. Warm colors are more cheerful and stimulating than cool colors which are calm and restful. Next we will see the second color that is value. The value of a color refers to its darkness or lightness. There are many degrees of light and dark ranging all the way from white or black. By adding white a color is lightened and by adding black a color is darkened. White has the highest value and black has the lowest value. If the color chart is compared with the value scale it will be seen that the hues change gradually in value with the lightest at the top and the darkest at the bottom as depicted you will see the table 1 the value scale and step in a color color wheel that is the value scale and value step in color wheel one by one first one is white second one is highlight that is yellow light next one is yellow orange yellow orange low light orange and green middle orange red green blue high dark red and blue dark red violet blue violet low dark violet black black we will see the value scale 1 to 9 so by adding white to a color we obtain a lighter color that is a tint by adding a black to a color we obtain a darker color that is called a shade when gray is added to any color its tones are obtained. Thus, technically speaking, pink is a tint of red and a maroon is a shade of red. The term tone refers to a range of tints and shades of a color. Tones are obtained by graying the color. For instance, in the above example, grayish red is the tone of red. In interior design, mostly tints are used. Pure colors and shades are used sparingly. Next, we will see the implications of value. That is, 1. Light values seem to increase the size of objects. Small room may be made to appear larger if furnished in lighter colors. Also, light values create the impression of distance. A low ceiling can be made to have a raised effect by painting it white. Second one is white and other very light values reflect color and seem to intensify color of objects seen against them and vice versa. Next third one is black and dark values seem to increase the size of an object. Therefore, a small room should not be furnished in dark colors. Instead, dark values seem to be occurring a large room to appear small. A large room where light colors are used in the furnishing may seem empty. Instead, dark colored furnishing can help this room to appear adequately furnished. Besides, darker values of a color are particularly appropriate for floors and rugs because they give to the room an impression of stability. In store display, dark values should be used below rather than above light values for if they are seen above the light colors the display will appear unstable as it appears in table 1 dark value shades are to be used at lower levels and lighter values tints at higher levels it is no wonder that all room ceiling are done with white paints which is the lightest color for the nurse, in home furnishing close values are agreeable if many colors are to be used. Close values produce quiet effects. Strong contracts have the opposite result. Although many colors and interest to a room but if used too much, the effect of unity may be lost. Therefore, not more than 3 or 4 values are to be used at one time in a room. 
to bring attention to an object which is aesthetically good it should be placed against a background of very different values to emphasize the object but when an object is not beautiful and least attention is desired it should be placed against a background very near its own value to have a subdued effect and see the value scale value the second dimension describes the lightness or darkness of a color there are many degrees of light and dark ranging all the way from white to black but for the sake of convenience in use nine typical steps are selected dr denman w ross have these nine steps names and the symbols to aid in visualizing them white is the highest value and no hue can be light as white black is the lowest value and no hue can be dark halfway between black and white comes middle value the value scale begins with white at the top that is called symbolized by w the next top is called highlight that is hl then come light that is light next is low light that is ll next is middle that is called m next is low dark that is ld next is dark that is d next is high dark that is hd and last one is black that is called b so if the color chart is compared with the value scale it will be seen that hues change gradually in value with the lightest at the top and the darkest at the bottom the table below gives the value equivalent of the normal colors we'll see one by one that is hl that is yellow l yellow orange and green yellow green L L that is orange and green, M red orange and blue green, H D red and blue, D red violet and blue violet, and last one is L D that is violet. Next we'll see how to change values. Values can be changed by adding white or water to lighten and by adding more pigment or black to darken them. Every hue is capable of being lower to a value just above black. and of being raised to a value just under white values that come above middle are commonly called higher values and those below middle or the low values next we'll see tint and shade a value that is lighter than the normal color is called a tint and one that is darker is called as a shade that is this picture depicts the tint and shade next third color is that is called intensity that is the symbol is i The other name of intensity is called as a chroma the symbol is c intensity or chroma is the dimension that tells the brightness or dullness of color its strength or its weakness the colors at full intensity are very striking and form brilliant and interesting effects when they are used with discretion the colors in the lower intensities are more subtle and for general purposes they are enjoyed in the large areas with the colors of full intensity used for accents as colors go down in the brightness and towards neutral gray or no color they are said to be of low intensity or chroma intensity or chroma is a saturation or purity of color that is it represents its brightness or dullness in other words it shows the presence or absence of gray or dullness in a nutshell it can be said it is the property describing the distance of the color from gray or neutrality line as in the case of the lemon which is brighter than the banana though both of them are the same color a color in its purest form has the greatest brilliance or intensity therefore intensity is that quality if color that makes it possible for a certain hue such as red to whisper or to shout or to speak in a gentlemanly tone the colors at full intensity are very striking and form brilliant and interesting effects the colors in lower intensities are more subtle and are enjoyed in large areas whereas colors in higher intensities are to be used in small areas similarly larger areas to be covered the less intense the color should be and the smaller the area the brighter the color may be colors in background are usually painted somewhat dull or gray or neutralized because it is easier to live and them in large amounts a color may be emphasized in the following way 
by placing in next to its complement example red against green orange against blue by combining the color with another neutral color like black or white which will emphasize color more than does gray that is black by repeating near it is large amount of the same hue in a lower intensity by repeating in some other part of a composition a small note of the same hue in a brighter intensity next we'll see the the prank color system the system developed by a david brewster is probably the best known color system and is often referred to as the prank systems colors may be divided into five classes primary binary intermediate tertiary and quaternary all colors may be attained by mixing in various proportions three fundamental hues red yellow blue these are called the three primary colors because they are the elements in the use of pigment they are the only hues in pigment that cannot be obtained by mixing with other hues when two primary colors are mixed in a small equal amounts a different hue will result this new hue is called a binary or secondary color there are three of these binary colors that is a purple we called violet in the prank system made by mixing red and blue green made by mixing yellow and blue and orange o that is from red and orange the primary and binary colors together are commonly called the six standard colors when a primary and a neighboring binary are mixed will get an intermediate hue results in appearance the intermediate is half way between the two colors there are six of these intermediate hues that is yellow green blue green blue purple blue violet red purple or red violet red orange and yellow orange so far the typical color chart have been placed however there is a room between each one of the intermediates and its neighbor for an indefinite number of gradations for example one can easily imagine a color half way between the blue and the blue green on the chart these hues may be indicated by repeating the name of the more conspicuous one thus the hue called peacock blue which is between be called blue blue green next on the spectrum would appear the blue green then green blue green and gray obviously it is possible to make more and more detailed charts recording steps between the standard and intermediate hues this is the prank color wheel when two binary colors are mixed at tertiary results the tertiary colors are yellow blue and red much neutralized tertiary yellow resembles as smoky yellow and the blue is known as a slate blue and tertiary red is called as a color of old red brick the following analysis illustrates how tertiary is obtained tertiary yellow is a mixture of green and orange green is b plus y and orange is y plus r and when they are mixed the color will be predominantly yellow with some purple from the red and blue this purple will neutralize part of the yellow leaving the color grayed yellow tertiary blue is a mixture of purple and green for r plus b plus b plus y gives principally blue dulled by orange from the red plus yellow tertiary red is a orange mixed with purple for yellow plus red plus red plus blue gives red dulled by green from the yellow plus blue next we'll see the primary and the secondary colors we'll get tertiary colors primary colors are yellow plus red orange red plus blue violet blue plus yellow green primary and the secondary colors together form normal colors when primary and the neighboring secondary color are mixed an intermediate or a tertiary hue results in appearance intermediate is half way between two colors there are six intermediate hues namely yellow orange green yellow blue green blue purple red purple and orange red table 3 indicates intermediate hues primary colors and secondary colors intermediate colors this is the primary colors secondary colors and intermediate colors some of the popular colors like pink brown lavender beige etc are not in the list of above colors but each of these can be described accurately by using the name of the hue with which it matches in the spectrum a mixture of two or two of tertiary colors is quaternary color for example tertiary yellow combined with blue gives quaternary green next we'll see the munsell color system in the munsell plan the dimensions of color or shown upon a sphere the hues appear around the circumference of the sphere values in a neutral gray are shown upon a 
vertical pole the axis of the sphere the north pole is white and the south pole is black as the hues become lighter in value they are placed higher on the sphere and as they grow darker they appear lower toward the south pole chroma or intensity is represented by paths or arms running from no color or neutral gray out to the circumference and beyond it munsell found that if hues were in proper balance around the sphere and this sphere were rotated up on its neutral axis at the high rate of speed the hues would blend together to form a neutral gray he decided to use five principal hues in order to make use of the decimal system the chosen hues were named red yellow green blue and purple the hues intermediate between these were named yellow red green yellow blue green purple blue and red purple instead of the 12 hue circle we now see 10 major hues divided into five principal hues and five intermediate hues munsell did not include the colors violet and orange because they represent the name of flower and fruit respectively numerals are used to designate the hues lying between the principal and intermediate hues principal blue would be 5b intermediate hue uh, 6 blue green and would be 5bg the hues lying between 5bg and 5b are designated as follows 6bg 7b6 8b6 9b6 10b6 the midpoint between 5b6 and 5b 1b 2b 3b 4b 5b and 6b has little more blue in it than 5bg 9b6 is a four steps from 5b6 and still six steps from 5b 10b6 is just half way between b6 and b the other steps 1b 2b 3b 4b all shows more blue and less blue green until they read 5b values in the munsell plan have numbers 10 steps are charted between black and white absolute black which is the i cannot see that is the number is 0 and is written in number 0 absolute white is number 10 half way between black and white is called middle value that number is number 5 the full strength of the weakest hue blue green determines the circumference of the circle and all other hues extend beyond the circumference in the degree of the relative strength the scale of red chroma is written r1 r2 r3 etc chroma is an almost gray but is recognizable as a warm gray and each succeeding step is nearer to the strongest visible red in the munsell rotation notation symbols are expressed as follows q value chroma thus the five principal hues as they appear in the fullest intensity now obtainable with permanent pigments would read as follows R four fourteen R eight slash twelve G S slash eight B four slash eight P three slash twelve. The five intermediate hues would read Y R that is five slash twelve G Y seven slash ten B G five slash six P B three slash twelve and R P four slash twelve. A study of color theories and qualities is essential for planning a color schemes. For a room, it requires a great deal of knowledge and thought for achieving success in that use, because we find infinite variety of colors both in natural and artificial objects. Thank you.